Growing up under the paradigm of platformers that require your character to jump to advance, Bionic Commando on the Nintendo Entertainment System made me feel like I was relearning how to walk. To put it bluntly, I sucked at the game. Hardcore. Like, I was absolutely terrible at it. Why? Well, instead of using a jump button like a normal game, Bionic Commando forces the player to use a grappling hook to traverse platforms, pits, and spikes, utilizing a swinging mechanic that was not really seen in too many games at the time. And I hated it. While the war-based background and the idea of blowing away Hitler was intriguing to me, I never finished Bionic Commando. Because of my gaming styles being solidly ingrained in my game choices, I didn't stray from the pack too often. Mega Man, Castlevania, Metroid, Mario, and more. They all had one thing in common. They could jump. So when a Patreon member put me up to the task to play Bionic Commando on the Game Boy, I admittedly internally groaned. Now I know what you're thinking. How could a handheld version of a timeless classic fare if the person playing it already has a bias against it? Well, stick with me, because the end result will be a bit surprising. I approached the portable Bionic Commando the same way I did any game, from scratch. However, these two games are impossible to not compare. Whereas the NES version of the game takes place during the 1980s involving a fight against the Bads, also known as the Nazis in the Japanese version. Wait, why are there Nazis in the 80s? The 1992 Game Boy title takes on a more sci-fi element. Here is the first time we are officially playing as Nathan Rad Spencer, as his 80s NES counterpart is called Lad, which is clearly supposed to be Rad. However, this is the first title where he gets the first and last name attributed to him. Rad is part of an elite group of freedom fighters known as the FF Corps. And yeah, I know I said corpse, not core. Much like Contra Hard Corpse, I refuse to not pronounce that P and S. And if you got a problem with that, you can piss off. Get it? Ha! Ah! Bad jokes aside, the FF Corpse are battling the Dore's army. The game opens with a breakdown of the story before we get to the title screen. I want to talk about the password section, but I figure let's just head right into the game itself and backtrack when applicable. You'll be placed onto a top-down map with all 16 stages spread out, lines between each one. You'll use your helicopter to move from stage to stage with the directional pad. When you finally select a stage, you can either descend onto it or traverse to a different location. This leads us to the loadout screen, where you'll choose weapons, headgear, armor, tools, or video receivers that are needed. Regarding the latter, throughout the game you'll come across rooms that you can sneak into and access a computer terminal. This gives you four options. Com, which lets you communicate with the FF Corps. Tap, the ability to listen into conversations with the Doray's army. Select, which allows you to choose a different weapon and video receiver. And End. Rad Spencer will stomp through level after level of bad guys, using his grapple to traverse the stage, eventually getting to the final room where you'll fight a boss, or a bunch of soldiers, while shooting a giant, I don't know, hourglass looking computer thingy? However, if you touch it, it's an instant death, just to make the boss fights less easy, and wow are they ever. I can't even begin to tell you how easy it was just to spam an attack with very little thought on these bosses in almost every single level. However, it's still fun. Once the room is cleared of baddies, you're free to blow up the computer and move on to the next stage. After finishing a level, you're usually given some sort of bonus, either a new weapon, armor, or item to change to in the loadout. However, some of the items aren't given specific enough detail. Pressing start to trigger a chosen item like the bioprotein health refill, for example, was come across by dumb luck. There's one-ups you can collect that are typically more rare than the standard enemy drop, which is a bullet. After a certain amount of bullets have been picked up, you'll add a chunk of health to your life bar down at the bottom right of the screen. There's also apparently a screen kill power-up, but I don't recall coming across it. The rest of the items are a lot more vague. I thought these boots make you faster, but it turns out they enhance your attack power? How? There's a permit that lets you access restricted locations, and for the weapons, we have the standard assault rifle, a wide-range rifle that shoots a three-pronged short-range blast, a grenade launcher, the Vulcan M274 that fires a three-pronged burst, and finally, the M83A machine gun. I typically used either the Vulcan or the grenade launcher. I never really went backwards with the guns in most cases, with an exception to the final boss, and that was only because I wanted more range. 
what I'm trying to explain is that I wish that there was a little bit more detail given to you in game regarding those items. You'll find yourself at times wondering, do I need to bring this? Should I bring this? Should I wait? Should I stop into the level, check it out, and then come back? It's kind of confusing, and the manual doesn't help that much either. The controls here are extremely responsive, though I admittedly still had issues using the bionic arm. That grapple and I fought with each other the entire game. When you're standing on a platform, you use the direction you want to go in and the up button to launch an angled grapple, or you can shoot it in the direction you're facing with the A button and no direction. This can be done to grab item drops or push back enemies. Where the grapple frustrates me to no end is in regards to platforming. Launching your arm diagonally, you can press A to pull your character up to the platform of choice. Automatically, Rad will start to swing and allow you to press the direction to release and swing over to the next section to grapple with the A button. Shortly after, say, level 11 out of 16, I start to notice a dramatic increase in the platforming difficulty, to the point where I just can't advance. The grapple points are either too narrow or you've got to start playing around with grappling straight up and catch yourself, then refocus your pattern. You may even have to go backwards to go forwards. Now there is a cool cancel mechanic that you can utilize by pressing down when you're swinging, and that helps with accessing certain spots. There are even some doorways that are completely inaccessible with a simple swing, causing you to, I don't know, almost double grapple onto a higher section that you really shouldn't be able to grapple onto, and then swing around. In theory, and what I'm really trying to say here is that the wall should block you, but no, not in Bionic Commando. As I said earlier, it truly makes you feel like you're relearning something that should be so basic. Can I blame the game itself for this? Eh, I don't think so. I know I did as a kid, but the way this is designed, it's done in a way that requires advanced thinking for how to get from point A to point B. The most infuriating parts were level 12, level 16, and the final boss stage that's hidden until you finish the last stage, level 17. I spent hours on these platforming sections to the point where my palms were literally sweating. Throughout the entire game, there are neutral stages where you'll see both enemies and friendly non-playable characters scattered throughout. If you fire when in the stage, enemies will appear and attack you until you leave. You're even told once you arrive and talk to the first NPC, that firing is prohibited. What's wild is, not only have I seen captured enemies available for interrogation by Rad, but there's even a room you can enter into where an enemy sabotages you. The only time I was able to fire my weapon and get away with it in the neutral stages. So I guess that whole neutral thing kind of goes out the window. There's also one where you have to shoot down a blockade with a specific gun to advance, causing enemies to start chasing after you while you race to the other side. This does a great job of breaking up the typical stages, and is also mandatory to access new video receivers that you'll get in the game. The video receivers are used in the stage's computer rooms, and if you've got the wrong one attached, you can't see the video. Fortunately, the developers thought ahead of this and allowed you to change them in the equipment selection within that very room. Smart thinking. You'll notice during this footage that this game is quite striking. There's a clear Mega Man X influence in the character designs. Little dialogue boxes will pop up with pictures of who's talking, each character sporting that spiky hair and bulky sharp armor from said series. In stage 17 in particular, with this giant metal wing in the background showcasing how big the level's floating airship really is, all while tinier airships hover in the distance. The sound of guns blazing as you move to the final showdown, it's all really riveting to take in. Probably the most frustrating section is after you defeat Ryle a second time in his more hulked out armor. Wait a minute, Ryle. That's only one letter off from Vile. Hmm. This character does play a similar role since you fight him twice. And level 17 really gives off some serious Mega Man X Sigma intro stage vibes. Even the final battle just reeks of Sigma's wolf-infused armor. There's a stage where Rad gets captured and you get broken out by a female commando who gives you her grapple so you can reclaim your weapons and her face looks awfully familiar. Is that Shin from UN Squadron? I always thought he was a girl as a kid. Well, I guess it's just Capcom ripping off Capcom, so I can't be too mad. The rolling clouds when falling to your doom in the final section of level 17 has some nice parallax scrolling. This is a great looking game, but how does it sound? Awesome. Aside from the exciting sound effects that permeate the experience, Bionic Commando on the Game Boy soundtrack blows away the NES game's tunes by a long shot. Sure, there's less to love here, but it's all extremely fitting. There's a mix of more militaristic-tinged tracks, 
along with hard rocking headbangers. You've been hearing it throughout this episode in the background, but my absolute favorite is worth showcasing on its own right here. The final big bad is known as Wiseman, and he, much like the other bosses, is fairly easy to beat. Just grapple onto his hand, shoot him in the face, then move to the other side of the room so the hands extend away from his body. This lets you grapple back up easily and shoot with the longer range shot. I died many, many times in this game, and while you can collect continues from certain superpowered soldiers, these are only accessible when running into an enemy ship on the map. You'll play through a short burst of enemies with these planes regenerating once finished. See, Capcom knew you were going to be terrible and die constantly in this game, so they allowed checkpoints in the final stage specifically so that if you needed to leave and go hunt down some more continues, you could go back to the final level and drop back to the last checkpoint. I have to applaud them for this, as they could have made the game stupidly difficult and force you to replay the level if you leave it, but nope, you only have to do that if you get a game over and have to re-enter the password. Ah yes, let's get back into the passwords. At the title screen, you're given an option to either start the game or enter a password. A continue option will only be present if you lose all your lives. The passwords aren't too complicated. Put in circles, triangles, and squares, and hit start to get back to where you left off. Each non-neutral stage will finish with a generation of a password that can be used, and while entering in the password wrong just sends you back to the main screen, it's still a fairly easy process. I liked Bionic Commando on the Game Boy way more than the NES game. Maybe I'm just a sucker for that KG and Ifune art style. Maybe I just thought the game was faster paced and more exciting. Perhaps it was the more sci-fi style weapons and locations. I'm not sure, but I went into this one assuming I was going to dislike it as much as the NES game, and it turns out I was dead wrong. Was it extremely difficult? Yes, absolutely. But I still had a blast playing through it. I'd say it was only in those later stages that my enjoyment lessened because of the steep platforming difficulty increase. There's a Game Boy Color game called Bionic Commando Elite Forces that pushes even further into this sci-fi vibe, so this game has me wanting to check that one out too. I guess it just goes to show that even when you think you know how you'll feel about a game, your mind can always be changed by playing it. Always approach a game with an open mind. Big thank you to Patreon member Sam Schaefer for choosing this as his Patreon Mini Review Award. Thanks to all Patreon supporters, but especially the Morningstar Whip tier and up. They are Sam Schaefer, The Eighth Sign, Scott McElhone, Venthros, Great White North Presents, Nintendo, Bryce, Derek Demitter, and Trevin Adams. Your continued support helps fund reviews like this one, which would simply not be possible without the donations from Patreon members. I appreciate each and every one of you for continuing to help me make the content that you want to see. Classic goofy YouTube video game reviews. If anyone is interested, just a dollar down gets you access to exclusive streams on Discord, stretch goals like Taco Bell food reviews each month, along with director's cut commentary for episodes, a free sticker, regular updates on upcoming reviews, and more. Check it out at patreon.com forward slash dongled. I hate to sound like a typical YouTuber, but if Patreon's not your thing, but you still want to help get the word out, share this video on social media. Exposure really helps, so if you like these videos and think your friends will too, sharing it with them means a lot. Want more Dude You Haven't Played This Game? Check out the videos enclosed below. You can click on the left hand side or the right hand side for a totally different but totally awesome review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Dude You Haven't Played This Game.